Right, so here's our first example. We're going to try and prove that 2 to the power of n is greater than n squared. And then you've got all this stuff over here, which I know looks really complicated. But don't freak out. The only reason why I've written all these symbols is because I'm lazy. I don't want to write all the words out. And we have symbols for this. If you've never encountered this before, let me give you a really brief explanation. N is the number that we're interested in. And uh, this is the Greek letter epsilon there. Its technical meaning is... Um, is an element of. Uh, N is an element of uh, this set here. The Z is for a German word, Zahl, which is basically about integers, whole numbers, counting numbers. And so when you say N's an element of this set, what you're basically saying is, what kind of number is N? N is one of the integers. But we continue going and we say, it's not just any of the integers, this, um, this vertical line, it means such that. So I read this as, n is an integer such that it's one of those integers where it's bigger than 4. Okay, so those are the conditions on n that are set in the question. So what we're going to do is we're going to work through our normal three steps when it comes to every induction proof. We're going to test, test the base case. We're going to assume uh, that this thing is true for some arbitrary value. Then we're going to do the main part of the work, which is the proof step. Okay, so let's make sure we start at the top because even from step one, uh, there are a few differences between this kind of induction proof and uh, your series of sequences or your divisibility proofs, okay? So for starters, have a look. n is greater than 4, but n's an integer. So my base case is not going to be 4, it's going to be 5. So I'm going to test for n equals 5. Now, before I write down the next step, let me tell you how not to write the next step. Please do not write... 2 to the power of 5 is greater than 5 squared. Even though it is true that 2 to the power of 5 is greater than 5 squared. Here's why. This is what you're trying to prove, or you're trying to show by going through this test, that the statement is actually true for your base case, right? Now, if you say this right from the outset, then you kind of assumed that. We are going to get to assumptions, but that's later on. This is not something you're supposed to be assuming. This is something you're supposed to be testing. And of course, you don't always get something nice and simple like 2 to the power of 5, which you know the value of, or 5 squared, which you know the value of. Sometimes you've got to get something much more complicated on both sides. You don't know that the left-hand side is greater than the right-hand side until you get all the way to the end through the working. So you cannot begin this way. Um, you're supposed to end that way. So what do you write instead? Well, with inequalities, I recommend that you take the left-hand side, wrong color, and the right-hand side separately. So here's what we do. We get the left-hand side and we say, what's that equal to? Well, it's 2 to the power of 5. Don't skip any steps. Actually do the substitution, then evaluate. Once you do on the left, on the left, I'm going to do the right on the right. That's going to give me, in this case, n squared. That's 5 squared. So that's 25. Left over here, right over there, I can say, oh, well, in this case, the left-hand side is greater than the right-hand side. Um, at least it is for this n equals 5 value. So there we go. It's true. Base case is done. Next, we move on to the assumptions. So I'm going to assume that this is true for n equals k. Now, I'm going to go ahead and write this. And usually people just say that, right? Assume that that's true. Or even to say, uh, use those words, assume true for n equals k, and then they write this, and most people are pretty happy to pack up the shop and leave. But I want to emphasize to you, just like n, specifically, exactly like n, k is not just any number. There are conditions on k. k has to be a certain kind of number, namely the same kind of number that n is. Now, we usually skip over stuff like this, but I'm going to make a big song and dance about it because here's all the same conditions. If you leave out this step, you literally are missing the crucial piece to actually do the induction. So you must state this. Just like when you're solving functions and you have a domain restriction, the domain restriction really matters. Uh, it's tempting to leave it off, but without this, I promise you by the end, we will not be able to solve this. So I've written it down. Test, assume, now I have to write down the prove step. So that is for n equals k plus 1. What does it look like? So up here, I'm going to write it as 2 to the k plus 1 is greater than k plus 1 all squared. Okay, so here's what I'm trying to prove. Now at this point is where I choose between one of my two methods. And you really can for pretty much any 
induction inequality proof, you pretty much can choose either of these. Usually one is better, but in this case, I'm gonna stick with method two. You might ask, well, how did I know that it's method two? Once we get to the end of this, I'll try and explain why I think this is more useful. So what I need to do is to get, here is the K plus one statement. I wanna try and get it in the form f of k, all the stuff to do with k on one side and then zero on the other side. In this case, it's not that complicated. All I need to do is subtract this k plus one all squared. Then I've got zero on the right hand side. Okay, so I've got it in the form, a function of k. See all that? There's my function of k. Put all the k's in, you'll get a number out. It's greater than zero. And now what I want to do is start with this thing on the left hand side. This is the object that I want to consider. In fact, I'm even going to write it in that way. I'm going to say consider uh, the left hand side, which equals two to the K plus one minus K plus one or squared. Okay. So I've got to do two things here. Number one, I want to twist and turn this into such a form that I can use the assumption. I haven't said anything about the assumption yet in my proof. I've just got my first line. So I want to uh, work this in a way or manipulate it so that I can see the terms that you can see here. Okay. So for instance, I noticed that on the left hand side of my assumption, I have a two to the power of K. That stands out to you because I have a two to the power of K in this statement here. I just need to kind of massage it a little bit so it's a little more obvious. So you can see if I take out a factor of two, that gives me two to the K in there. That's the thing that I can work with, minus K plus one or squared. Okay, now at this point, I'm gonna do something again, that looks a little bit weird because you're so used to dealing with equations. Um, I'm about to do something that you can only do with inequality. So this will feel unfamiliar. Let's just suppose I say something really boring, like 100 equals two times 50, okay? Now, if I say that this is true, that's nice. Um, I could sort of you know, evaluate this or write it in different ways, but I'm actually interested in turning this equation. Can I use this equation to make a statement that's an inequality, okay? Because you can see here, I've got equations here. Where I wanna end up is here, which is an inequality, right? So for instance, what I could do is, see if it's 50? If I changed it and substituted it for something smaller, like say 49, okay, and everything else is still the same. This is not equal anymore. It's not an equation anymore. But I can say, if I think about this number and this number, because I've swapped the 50 for something smaller, this side over here is, as a whole, it's now smaller, right? So in comparison to the original thing, which hasn't changed, this thing's gotten smaller, this thing stayed the same, so this is greater than this, right? You make this side smaller, then the original thing will be greater than your new smaller result, okay? So you can turn an equation into an inequality using this fact. And I'm gonna do exactly the same thing here, watch. 